Now uh, to make an opening statement against the motion, it's time to end affirmative action. Tim Wise. Thank you. <clears throat> you know, it always amazes me to hear critics of affirmative action speak about this subject as if racial preference were something that were invented in the 60s to benefit people of color. Because in fact, whether we wish to acknowledge it or not, and of course we don't, the entire history of this country is the history of affirmative action for white folks like myself. And unless we begin by discussing that affirmative action and the impact that it has had, we engage in a discussion that is both ethically and practically irresponsible. Contrary to what Joseph tells you, this debate is about the extent to which racism still exists because it is indeed the existence of that racism which necessitated affirmative action in the beginning and continues to necessitate it today. Whether we wish to acknowledge it or not, enslavement, Indian genocide, segregation did not only oppress people of color, they elevated white folks and provided us with opportunities that we did not in fact earn. The Homestead Act allowed whites to claim over 270 million acres of land for virtually nothing down at a time when folks of color could not. Today there are 40 million white folks descended directly from those who received that land, give away millions of them still living on the property. They owe their lives to affirmative action. Then there was the FHA home loan program, which for the first 30 years of its existence operated in a whites only fashion, lending over $120 billion worth of government backed housing equity to whites, thereby creating the white middle class. And in large measure, because of those preferences, the typical black college couple, college degreed couple starts out with less than one fifth the net worth of the typical young white couple because the latter of those has likely received the benefits of their family's prior head start, while the former are likely to have accumulated far less, having had less chance to do so. So against that backdrop, ending affirmative action would only further cement the systemic advantages for whites that have been in place for hundreds of years. It would be tantamount to favoring those three laps ahead in a five lap race, even though those who were ahead gained their head start as the result of an unfair process. But even worse, to end affirmative action would ignore the ongoing reality, not past, but ongoing reality of white racial preference, and not only in education, but also in employment. And let me clarify, we were not told that our remarks tonight had to focus only on higher education. That resolution doesn't mention higher education. I will not speak of it only with regard to schools, because it is not only there that it matters. According to the Office of Federal Contract Compliance, Three out of four companies covered by affirmative action regulations violate them regularly, and not just that, but are also in violation of basic civil rights law. The problem is the OFCCP only has enough monitors to check up on the companies under their purview once every 46 years. So there's no deterrent. But those who would end affirmative action never call for beefing up civil rights enforcement. Indeed, though his teammates might not know it, Mr. Pell's organization advocates abolishing anti-discrimination law altogether as it regards the private sector. So Joseph can sing the praises of the 1964 Civil Rights Act, but the man sitting next to him would get rid of it as it regards private organizations. So to endorse the resolution would only intensify the problem of discrimination. Those who would end affirmative action ignore the study, recent study, which found that job applicants with white sounding names have a 50% greater chance of getting a call back for an interview than those with black sounding names even when qualifications are indistinguishable. They ignore not only that, but the research which has found that eight in 10 jobs are never advertised. Instead, they're filled by networking, a process that mostly excludes people of color and women of all colors and elevates whites and men, not because we are better for certain jobs, but because we know the right people. And if affirmative action were abolished, none of that would change for the better. If anything, it would get worse. The same is true for schooling. Our opponents will rail against so-called preferences for students of color while they ignore the preferences built in for whites. So they condemn the University of Michigan for giving 20 points on a 150 point scale to students of color, but they ignored the points that were in practice essentially for whites only. Like the 16 points you got if you were from the upper peninsula of Michigan. The snow is not the only thing white there. The 10 points just because you went to a top high school, which means your parents lived in the right zip code. The eight points for taking advanced placement classes, which are three times more available in schools serving white kids than schools that serve mostly students of color, or the four points you got if daddy went to Michigan. They rallied behind Jennifer Gratz as the supposed victim of reverse discrimination because the year she was rejected, there were about 85 students of color who got into Michigan despite having lower scores and grades, but they say nothing about the 
the 1,400, let me repeat, 1,400 white students with lower grades and lower scores than Jenny Gratz who got in. You see, less qualified white people are no problem, but less qualified people of color, my goodness, we can't have that. They say nothing about the study from six weeks ago which found that for every one student of color who receives any benefit from affirmative action in college, there are at least two whites for every one person of color, two whites who also didn't meet the requirements but got in because daddy wrote a check or mama made a phone call or somebody pulled strings and got them in. But affirmative action for rich white people is never a problem for the folks like our opponents. While they insist affirmative action is racist because it holds people of color to lower standards, the fact is it is whites who have been held to lower standards. It is whites and only whites, I would suggest, who can get C's all the way through school, brag about their mediocrity publicly, mangle the English language, and go on to become president of the United States. So... When they lament the supposed damage done to student of color by affirmative action because it supposedly forces them to question their abilities, ask yourself why no concern for the mental health and self-image of white Americans who have been being preferred for 400 years and if their argument is correct, must be the most self-hating people on the face of planet Earth. And no affirmative action doesn't place people of color in positions for which they're unqualified. Indeed, once we control for economic status, comparing only whites and folks of color from families with both the same income and wealth profile, there is no difference in college graduation rates and only an insignificant difference in college grades. And black students at the most selective schools actually do better in relation to their white counterparts than those in less selective schools. Furthermore, according to 200 different studies on the subject, not just one that I'm pulling out of my ass, but 200 different studies, employees who have benefited from affirmative action perform equal to or better than their white male counterparts once given a chance to prove themselves. So in closing, unless our opponents can show you that they have some alternative mechanism for addressing that legacy of white racial preference and one. the ongoing advantages extended to whites in this country, unless they can demonstrate some alternative means by which true equal opportunity can flourish to vote for them and to vote for ending affirmative action is to engage in an act of irresponsible racial aggression. It is to ignore the wisdom of Dr. King who said quite clearly in 1963, quote, whenever this issue of compensatory or preferential treatment is raised, some of our friends recoil in horror. The Negroes should be granted equality, they insist, but should ask for nothing more. <clears throat> While at first that seems reasonable, in fact it is unrealistic, for it is obvious that if you take a man and put him at the starting line of a race 300 years after another man, the first man, would have to perform some incredible feat in order to catch up, end of quote. And to end affirmative action even does violence to the logic displayed by Ronald Reagan, whose mention alongside the word logic is rare coming from me, but who said as governor of California, when signing into law that state's Thank affirmative you, action Tim policy. Thank you, Tim Wise, for that opening statement. I didn't get my one minute warning, but if I could finish the quote from, if no, I could I think, finish the quote from no, Reagan, I, I, I'd appreciate it. I think everyone else in the room heard it. Uh, Tim, why don't you take a seat? Sorry, you'll, you'll have time later. That's fine. Thank you, Tim Wise.